We're talking about how the coronavirus pandemic is affecting you and your finances, whether you're very close to retirement or decades away, let's help you make some smart moves with your money. I am happy to welcome in Ted Schmelzley of Securian Financial. You're joining us from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thanks for being with me. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It's wonderful to be with you today. Of course. Let's first talk about the coronavirus relief bill that was uh, passed by lawmakers late last week. What should the average American expect from this? Well, if we're focusing in on qualified retirement plans like a 401k or a 403b, the CARES Act, as it's called, that was signed into law by President Trump, has some significant relief. So what it does is it provides a couple of new avenues for folks that are feeling a financial pinch because of COVID-19 and how they might get money out of that qualified plan. Let's talk about, um, when you say a qualified plan, are we talking 401k, IRA? Let's be more specific. Yeah, so it would include 401ks or 403b type plans through an employer. Okay, um, so this isn't just for people who are very close to retirement. If you're you know, 23 right out of college and you just got your first job with a 401k, this could apply to the, the younger set as well. Absolutely. So if you're in a qualified plan, again, through, through an employer, your garden variety 401k plan, um, that's going to, you know, uh, all employees of all ages are going to be in that plan. So you really have to think about where you're at in your journey. A couple of the, vari the variables that you might consider are your time horizon. That is when you'll actually need the money, when you'll have to take that out. And then secondly, what your diversification is. Those are some things that you want to consider in investing for the long term. Now, of course, people that are adversely affected by the coronavirus, the COVID-19, um, it might throw some of that into a tailspin. So they might have some very immediate needs. And that's what the CARES Act helps to, um, to speak to. If you're not in that group, that is, if you are not affected uh, with a layoff or you don't um, uh, have COVID-19 and have, or have to care for a loved one that has one, uh, you might be in a situation where you can think more long-term. You might be asking yourself, what do I do in this environment in my 401k? So let's go ahead and tackle that scenario. Let's just, let, let's make an imaginary person. Let's say 30 years old, she's single, she has a steady job that isn't affected by the coronavirus pandemic. She's been investing in her 401k for the past five years. What should someone like that do? Wow, okay, perfect example. Somebody like that, uh, if, you're, if you're in your plan and you don't have those contingencies because of COVID, you're in a great position. Uh, you have on your side the most powerful attribute in finance. I think it would be roundly agreed that you've got time on your side. Your horizon is decades away. So what the market is doing now, honestly, is, is academic. Um, you're concerned about when you're going to take that money out at perhaps 65, 60, 65 years old. You've got the power of time. You need to put that on your side. Should someone who's 30 maybe consider, if, if she can squeeze a few more dollars, um, should she be putting even more into her 401k or other investments at this time? If I were in that situation, that's what I would be thinking. Um, those dollars that you invest now in a down market are likely the most impactful dollars that you'll ever invest. And the reason is they've got that magic of compounding over time in a tax preferred environment. That is you're earning interest on top of interest on top of interest. So small amounts over time compound greatly and become very large amounts, you've got financial security. Right, and I always like to say that if you buy now, you're sort of buying on sale, right? The worst time to buy is when everything is, is, is back up again. Let's take our same example, this, this woman. Let's fast forward, let's say 30 years. Now she's 60 years old and she thought she was going to retire in about five years. She's looking at her 401k and thinking that might not be the case. Right. So great example. Again, that person finds themselves in a, in a different situation relative to their time horizon. Now, hopefully they've been looking at their plan all along and they're, they're well diversified. That certainly isn't something that gets rid of risk, but it helps to mitigate the risk of a down market. So when you're in different asset categories, uh, you don't feel the full effect as if you were in, say, a 100% equity type mutual fund arrangement. So with that person, I would also say their time horizon might not be as short as they think. People are living a long, long time. And so 
One thing that folks that are near or at retirement have to think about is decumulation over a number of years. So even though they might be retiring at 65, their actual time horizon might be much longer. And they still have to take that into account in terms of, an, of that long-term investing um, stance. I know that when my husband and I went through this planning several years ago, um, the, the financial advisor we were working with said, um, you should expect to need about 80% of your, uh, uh, you know, let's say we're spending $100,000 a year on living. We were told that we should expect to spend about $80,000 a year on just living. And here I thought, oh, I can live so cheaply. Man, you know, it's going to be nothing like what we're doing now. But we were actually told, no, we, you still drive your car. You still go to the doctor. You know, you still go out to eat every now and then. I was shocked that you need that much money if you're just retired. Yeah, that's a great point. Financial professionals here can really help to sharpen that, uh, that saw for you and to really hone in on what you're going to need in retirement. So your replacement income, you know, 80% replacement income, I know a lot of people use that as a kind of a barometer of where you need to be. I don't think that's bad at all. There's a lot of expenses that you incur in retirement that you might not think about. For instance, you're getting older, you're going to have more medical expenses. Perhaps you and your spouse or loved one uh, your partner like to travel, uh, those expenses are going to come into play as well. So I, it, what, it, what it, I think and I would advise people or tell them to do um, is to think about what their budget might look like. Okay, sit down with a qualified financial advisor, really drill down into what they envision retire, retirement being, and then back up and say, okay, what steps do I need to take to get there? And again, that's going to be hugely dependent on where you sit relative to your time horizon. Do you work with any clients there in uh, Minneapolis who thought they were going to retire in the next couple of years, but are now sort of facing the reality of, you know what, maybe it's going to be a few more years or several more years before they can retire? Yeah. So at Securing Financial, uh, we've been in downtown St. Paul since 1880, nationwide financial institution. Um, we've got folks 21 million customers across the United States um, that find themselves in all different kinds of situations. And certainly some of those are going to be affected in the manner that you just described. Um, this is a bit of a curveball, right? It, it's just, it's similar to 2008, uh, where we had a, a very big downturn. People had to reevaluate. For some, that's going to mean that they're going to have to push out retirement perhaps a little further. And again, Tapping a, a qualified retirement plan, a 401k, if you want to take a distribution or a loan, um, a, talking with a, with a financial advisor to say when is the right time to do that, but knowing that that option is there is also very helpful. So my hat's off to Congress uh, and President Trump for signing the CARES Act. Um, I think that pro provides some significant relief to people if they've got money in, in, in a 401k and they need to get it out. There's a couple of avenues there that, that might help to lessen the burden. I know that the rules are pretty strict on when you can take money out of a 401k if it's not retirement. Tell me about some changes there. Right. So the CARES Act provides some significant ones. I'll, I'll, I'll throw them into three buckets. The first one is distributions. So that's taking money out. Um, of your qualified plan, ordinarily, in order to do that, any money that you would take out before age 59 and a half would be subject to a 10% penalty, and then you would have to pay your ordinary income tax on that. The CARES Act does away with the 10% penalty. So as long as you qualify, uh, that is, you're covered, you have a COVID-19 covered event, and you qualify for a distribution, if your plan adopts this relief, then you can take money out and it would not, uh, you would not be charged that 10% penalty. And there's some special rules about how you might be able to pay that back over, say, three years, and it wouldn't even come into ordinary income. So that's so, bucket number one. And that wouldn't be taxed as, as ordinary income. So, so both of those burdens are lifted. That's correct. Now, on the, on the ordinary income side, there are some provisions about paying it back. So if you didn't put it back in over three years, and there's some intricacies there, then, then you would have it accounted in your, in your income. Uh, the point is, there's flexibility. You wouldn't have that flexibility uh, but for the CARES Act. We also have loan provisions that, uh, that are different now with the CARES Act, and this would be taking money out of the plan in the form of a loan. 
Uh, there, again, what we see is you've got the ability to um, uh, take out more money than you would otherwise be able to take out. And there's some liberalized provisions in terms of when you would have to start paying that back or the length of time over which you could pay that back. So another, again, another very good option that you might consider if you're in that situation. Now granted, what I would say is taking money out of your qualified plan should be a last resort. Completely understand there's, there are people in that situation where they have to do that. Um, the downside of course is it's coming out of the plan and you lose that long-term compounding that can help you to get to retirement security at the end. When it comes to making these hard decisions, do you have anything for people who, number one, may be in a difficult position? And, and I say this knowing full well that even having a financial advisor is something of a luxury for many people to begin with. So for the person at home who's seeing this thinking, you know what, I just got furloughed. I've never had a financial advisor, but I don't know what to do. Is there anything you can say to someone who's in that position? First of all, um my reaction would be, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, it's, it, it's such a horrible thing. And I know that there's so many people that are dealing with that, that reality today. Um, beyond that, there's a wealth of information available on the internet that can help you kind of navigate these rocky shoals. Uh, Securian.com has some that you might, you might consider taking a look at. Uh, there are also a number of other websites uh, and information that you can just gather to make sure that you're educating yourself and making a sound decision. I would also, you know, if you have a trusted advisor, it doesn't have to be a financial advisor, but somebody that, you know, gives sound advice that you can really just to help you step back from the noise. The point is you don't want to make this hugely emotional decision. Um, that's when we tend to make mistakes, right? So let's not make it in a rush. Let's kind of step back as best we can in this very difficult time and try to make a decision that's calm and, and the, prudent, the most prudent one that we can with the information that we've got. And if, if you had the ear of lawmakers in Washington, what would you say is needed? I know lawmakers are debating whether or not the country needs another relief bill. If you could craft one yourself, what would you want to see, Ted? Boy, um, that one is a bit above my pay grade, I'll say that. Um, I would focus on what we've got so far. I think what has been crafted thus far is really, really good in terms of hitting a sweet spot for those folks and being able to access their qualified retirement plan. There's a lot of people out there that are smarter than I am that are, going to do, that are going to think about how this financial crisis is solved and what steps we might want to take. I'd leave it in their capable hands. Okay. And finally, I always do try to focus on the positive. You know, I, I sort of joked about, you know, buying stocks on sale right now. Is there any sort of a silver lining? I know interest rates are rock bottom. Um, you know, the, the housing market is sort of at a, a, a standstill. I'm talking to you from the San Francisco Bay Area, and most realtors say they're not doing open houses, they're not even doing showings. I know they've had some virtual showings, um, but, you know, things have just slowed almost to a stop. Is there anything that people who are in a position of having some money right now can do to take advantage of that? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, stocks and mutual funds, uh, many times when the market is, is really experiencing one of these sell-offs and downturns, it's the only time, you know, something's on sale and people leave the store. Um, if you've got that kind of wherewithal and you're comfortable investing, then it might be a time where you could actually put that money to work. And to your point relative to interest rates, I know when, uh, when my wife and I bought our first house, uh, interest rates were exponentially higher, right? And so it was a material factor in, in what we did and decided relative to our living standard and what we could afford. Um, folks are going to be in a little, in a better situation in that, on that front, uh, just because borrowing is going to be at a much cheaper rate. Okay. Well, Ted Schmelzley of Securian Financial talking to us from Minneapolis, Minnesota. What's the weather like there where you are real quick? Oh, we're enjoying a, a beautiful spring day. Uh, it's about 53 degrees and sunny. Uh, just a really, really fine day. So I'm happy the sun is shining. Uh, it, 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 it is, it's, it's nice to see it. Well, I'm happy to say the sun is shining here uh, in the Bay Area as well. Thank you for joining me. And if you'd like any more information on this, you can always find that at coronavirusnow.com. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ted. Have a great rest of your day. And you as well. Thanks for the opportunity. Of course, of course. We'll talk again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.